Lexington, Kentucky. And this short video is describing how I built this uh, 12 volt battery for my conversion vehicle. The bat inside the battery is uh, A123 cells, uh, six parallel and four in series. So I'm getting 120 ampere hour uh, battery out of this configuration. The outside of the case is sheet metal. I just happen to have some sheet, galvanized sheet metal lying around. So I said, hmm, why not? And then uh, one other thing I did was to put insulation all around. And so I'm now gonna show you the details of this whole project here. But first, just a little aside. There I was watching this week's video when all of a sudden I saw this. This is the A123 battery interconnect scheme as devised by Robin Wainwright up in Calgary. And uh, it looks pretty cool because this is the A123 battery interconnect scheme as devised by me. And uh, it appears that both of us independently came up with the same general technique for, for ganging up um, A123 batteries. Mine puts six cells in parallel and Robbins puts three, three cells in parallel. Just goes to show you that great minds think along the same lines. First I'm going to describe how I built up the battery pack. First thing I did was I built a little 3 8 inch plywood fixture that the batteries could all be stacked up in and it's got a sliding back to it on the right hand side and I've just got another little small battery for a weight to, to keep everything uh, standing upright otherwise it tended to fall over to the right. Now what I'd like to do is direct your attention to the aluminum blocks that are sitting on top of the uh, A123 cells. Starting on the left hand side of that center grouping you can see what looks to be the head of a nut and that's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, to the right of that you can see two thin pieces and in the crack between each of those thin pieces there are three tabs. So what I've got is six A123 cells in parallel for a total of 120 ampere hours. And then the interconnect between groups of six is that thicker, uh, wider piece of aluminum in the center. And then again, you see uh, two, two cracks with a thin thin piece between them. And again, there's, there's three tabs go up into each one of them. And then the end piece is half inch square aluminum and I threaded it as opposed to putting a bolt on the end of it. It, it gave me more clearance between the end of this uh, clamping assembly and the one to the extreme right, which you can see is just three uh, six cells because that's like the positive terminal and a, a uh, cable is going to attach to that and go out into the vehicle. The bolt that goes between or ties all of the aluminum segments together. That's really a quarter 28 threaded rod. And uh, it's also a very hard threaded rod. You almost had to cut it with a grinder. I mean, it, it was a really tough, tough job to cut it with a hacksaw. Anyway, I welded <coughs> the nuts on top at one end and then uh, you know bolted the whole assembly together. The reason the right hand piece is half inch square aluminum is because when I use the thinner pieces and I threaded them and then I put a I put the threaded rod through them and a bolt and really tried to wind them down uh, they the threads pulled out uh, before I thought I had the the um, bolts tight enough so I went to uh, the half inch and it worked out really good uh, you can really really tighten it down and uh, it doesn't strip out and so there's a lot of there's a lot of compression on those tabs and oh by the way Robin did the same thing the aluminum blocks that he tapped and the screws screw into uh, they're much thicker 
than the ones that are just involved in the clamping. Now I'm going to show you putting the little aluminum block assembly onto the six tabs. Uh, I first uh, you put a little cardboard protector in there so that if you happen so you cannot touch neighboring up metal parts uh, they tend to spark and get warm anyway the cardboards in place and here comes the assembly right on over and then usually the next thing I did was I tightened it finger tight and then came in with uh, uh, a wrench as soon as I put the, the cardboard piece back on there and it's just a matter of kind of get it kind of straight and then snug it down really good uh, you will notice the Norlock Nord lock washers uh, I did invest in those things and that's it for building the battery Next, I'm going to show you how I built the battery case. Uh, I had some old galvanized sheet metal lying in the corner of the garage, so that's what I used. And it was about 28, 29 thousand thick. And uh, obviously you can see the body of it. It's a, the U-shaped thing. And the two other objects are the left and right hand sides. Next, I took uh, all those pieces and I pop riveted them together to form the container you see there and then I got some uh, housing uh, styrofoam insulation it has an R value of 5 and I cut that to fit the box as you can see here uh, and here comes the back piece uh, I never throw anything out so I, I used up that piece of scrap there and we're coming up on the final piece which you wedgie in and then fit it all together. Now there's a front piece which we're not quite going to put on yet but that's what it will look like. There'll be a metal cover uh, over that and then of course there's a top piece and so the next thing we're going to do is to put the A123 battery assembly into uh, the box and in case you're wondering that is heavy and it took me a couple of attempts here to get the right grip on it to be able to slide it into the box but a little fooling around a little pushing and shoving and uh, we got it in there nice and snug and then of course comes the piece of insulation and it takes me two tries to get it right As it turns out, with a bunch of loose sheet metal parts, uh, it's always easier if uh, gravity is working with you. So, got to attempt to fit that in. And after some fooling around, uh, we get it lined up pretty good, get all the holes lined up. And then, I uh, didn't show you before, but I have braces. I just picked up one there. I just picked up the other one. Uh, we, I have braces like that on all of the seams so that uh, we picked up some more strength uh, be, uh, to help support the battery and that's the last one and then I adjust them all carefully and the first time I touch it uh, they fall back off and I was gonna pop rivet the whole thing together but then I said oops if I bring I, I hope I can bring this to Ebcon and, and have it on display and so if I pop riveted the whole thing together it'd be messy to get it back apart so I just use sheet metal screws here uh, I don't know how successful I would be uh, lowering the uh, the battery pack vertically down into the the battery case so uh, I decided I just put sheet metal screws on this side and <clears throat> that way I can open it back up and, and take out a bad cell or whatever in this view you are looking straight down at the top of the battery pack and it's all set to go here comes the final piece of insulation and I'm not sure whether I'm going to use a polycarbonate top and leave the insulation off for show and tell 
or I may just cover the whole thing with another piece of sheet metal for the additional safety and fireproofing. Here's a overall view of the final product. I haven't cut holes in it for the 12 volt battery cables because I'm not sure where or what orientation I'm actually going to mount this in the front of the old truck. So I'm just going to leave it that way.